Okay, uh, in this problem set we're going to continue talking about application problems and we're going to focus on what are called proportions. Proportions are extremely useful. They come up all the time as you'll see in just a minute. Um, a proportion is an equation where you have one fraction set equal to another. Uh, instead of calling it a fraction, we could also call this the ratio of 5 to 7. That's the same thing as saying 5 7 The ratio of 5 to 7 is equal to the ratio of x to 20. Um, when we set these up, we're going to always set them up so that we're going to set up the ratio so that the variable is always in the numerator. You can do that. You can, you can always do that as long as you're consistent. So when you write the equation, make sure you you, you, you set up the ratios so that the variable they're asking you to find is in the numerator. Solve the equation then answer in words. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's look at this first example. You Suppose you have a problem like this. Lupita runs 3 miles in 16 minutes. The question is, at that, if she kept the same rate, how far could she run in 40 minutes? So they're asking you how far, the distance, they're asking you for the number of miles, right? So the unknown is, is, is the distance. We're going to set up the ratios, two ratios are equal, so that, so that the distance is on the top, you see. We're going to set up the ratio like, like this. Put the distance on the top and the time on the bottom, and as long as you're consistent, the uh, proportion will be true. The distance traveled three miles over 16 minutes would equal how many miles over 40 minutes? Again, we, we, we set it up this way because we want to have the variable on the top. It's easier to solve that way. That's why we're doing it. Now, to finish this problem isn't too hard. To solve for the variable x, the, the distance traveled in, uh, 20, in 40 minutes, you'd multiply both sides by 40, right? Multiply by the reciprocal. And then uh, on, the, on the right side, you just get x. On the left side, instead of multiplying this out, I'm going to start to factor it. That's what we learned in Chapter 2, right? If you factor this, I believe you can cancel three factors of two. You get 15 over two, and so x equals 7.5. That's how far she can run in 40 minutes. To make sure you answer in words, she can run 7.5 miles in 40 minutes. Now let's let's do some more. So remember the secret, or I would say if there's a tricky thing about this, always set up the equation, the proportion, so that the variable they're asking you to find is in the numerator. All right, let's say you're looking at a recipe that calls for half a cup of sugar for every three cups of flour. So we're talking about the ratio of sugar, cups of sugar for cups of flour, or is it cups of flour per cups of sugar? You can do it either way as long as you're consistent. So what I'm telling you is, what are they asking you to find? They're asking you to find how many cups of sugar are needed. If you let that be your variable, because since that's what they're asking you to find, Set up your ratio so sugar is on top, flour is on the bottom. Cups of sugar over flour. How many cups of sugar? One half cup of sugar per three cups of flour. I'm going to use decimals here. This is one of the few cases where decimals might actually be easier to use. The cups of sugar per flour would be how many cups of sugar per two cups of flour. You see? As long as you keep the, as long as you're consistent, you can always make it so the variable is in the numerator. Once you get to there, we're just solving this using chapter 3. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Let's multiply both sides by 2. Now on the left side, what is 2 times 1 half? 2 times 0.5. Isn't it just 1? So on the left left side, you get 1 over 3. And here you just get x. So the answer is third cup of sugar, if you want, if you only have two cups of flour. That might be good if, you, if you're running out of sugar. Of, um, if you're running out of sugar and you want to know how much how much you can make. Very helpful, see, in real life. Oh, let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at this next one here. Speaking of cooking, I love to cook. Suppose now we're making apple pies, and we know that four apple pies require five pounds of apples. The question is, how many apple pies can you make if you have 12 pounds of apples? So what should we, the variable that they're asking us to find is the number of apple pies. So if x is the number of apple pies, remember we want to set up our proportion so that the apple pies is on the top of the fraction and the pounds of apples is on the bottom. Okay? Number of apple pies on the top, 
pounds of apples on the bottom. And again, we do that so the variable will be in the numerator. It just makes it easier to solve. That's all. It's no big deal. So four apples requires five pounds of apples. I should say four apple pies requires five pounds of apples. How many apple pies can you make for 12 pounds of apples? That's what they're asking. Solving is pretty easy. We multiply both sides by 12, right? On the right side you get x. On the left side, I don't think we can reduce this. Let's just write it as uh, 48 over 5. You can use long division if you want. If you use long, long division on that, you get um, 5 goes into 48 9.6 times. So that's the answer. You can make 9.6 apple pies. So what does that mean? Well, I guess that would probably mean really um, uh, the last pie is going to be a smaller dish maybe or something like that, huh? I don't know. Alright, let's keep on going. This, here, this would be useful when you're talking about unit conversion, which you'll do in your science classes a lot. Suppose one gallon of li liquid equals 3.8 liters. The question is how many liters are in 4.2 gallons? So you could use the ratio on this. The question they're asking is how many liters? So let, let's let x be the number of liters. That, that's important because we want to set up the ratios, the proportions, so that, that this variable is on the numerator. So we want liters to gallons, right? Liters to gallons. Liters on the top, gallons on the bottom. So 3.8 liters is one gallon. How many liters would be in 4.2 gallons? You see how you have to be consistent when you set this up? Always put liters on the top, gallons on the bottom. To solve this, we would um, multiply both sides by 4.2, right? Now on the left side, well on the right side we just get x. On the right side you would just use our, what we talked about, how to mul multiply de decimals. Pretend you're multiplying, um, if you multiply, uh, let's see, 42 times 38 you get 1596, so you better move the decimal place over. One place here, one place here, you get 15.96. So the answer would be 4.2 gallons is 15.96 liters. Nice, huh? Let's do one more. Why don't you try this one? This one is, is kind of an interesting one. If you ever want to rent an apartment, this might be helpful. Go ahead and um, see if you can do this one. S set up your proportion. Uh, figure out what, what, what the variable is they're asking you to find. Make sure you set up your proportion so that's in the numerator. and solve it. Go ahead and hit the pause button. question is, what would the prorated rent be for 20 days? So they're asking you how much money, right? Let X be the number of dollars it would, that's how much you'd pay for rent. So X is dollars. So you want dollars on the numerator and days on the denominator, you see? Dollars on the top, days on the bottom, because that's what we want to find is the number of dollars. Always set it up so that the variable that you're trying to find is on the numerator. It just makes it easier to solve, that's all. So $800 is for 30 days how many dollars would be for 20 days? So how would you solve this? You would multiply both sides by 20. On the left side, well on the right side you get x, on the left side you get 1600 divided by 3 and if you want to use long division on that you get um, 3 goes into 1600 it doesn't go in evenly so you're going to have to round here um, you get $533 and about 33 cents. Makes sense to round to pennies if that's money, right? So that, that's your answer. The rent would be $533.33. Now, well, I, should, I should mention this more often. Whenever you're working these, whenever you're working a problem like this, make sure your answer makes sense. If this were $5,333.33, that wouldn't make sense, would it? Because it's $800 for the whole month, so it makes sense that if he had 20 days, this, this, this number is a reasonable answer, isn't it? Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.